Grand Blue Fantasy is a series that's well known in Japan, but more people around the world have become more aware of its existence through the anime and the Grand Blue Fantasy vs fighting game series. But now people will be able to experience Grand Blue Fantasy in a new form. Once Grand Blue Fantasy Relink releases on the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 and PC on February the 1st, 2024. For this video, I've teamed up with Side Games, the creators of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and they've sponsored this overview video so that I can break down the various aspects of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink and showcase the various things you can do in the game, which will hopefully help you decide if this is a game that you should play. In this video, I'll be showcasing gameplay from my hands-on session with the full game, from developer showcases, and from the recently released PlayStation demo that you can try for yourselves right now. So after watching this video, if you decide that you want to learn more about the game or try the demo for yourself, click the link in the description or pinned comment to find out more. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is an action RPG with a single player main story and an additional quest mode that can be played solo and offline or online with other players worldwide. The story begins with the crew of the Grand Cypher airship setting out on a new adventure. This adventure is shown from the perspective of the airship's captain, who is the main character of this story. You'll have the option of selecting which version of the captain you would like to play as, but this choice isn't permanent since you can freely name and switch the appearance of the captain at any point throughout the game. As you progress through the story, you'll travel across various islands that have their own environments to explore, treasure to find, side activities to take part in, and challenging enemies to defeat. Your journey will also take you to various towns that have a variety of facilities to use and people to meet. Some of these characters will be important to the story, others will trade items and materials with you if you bring them the currency they require. You may also come across citizens of the island that require your assistance. These citizens will let you know about their concerns and they'll offer you side quests that have useful rewards if you decide to complete them. As you set out into the world, you'll travel across larger explorable areas that have hidden secrets to find, but there will also be areas that are more structured and flow more like an action game, with set-piece moments that keep things exciting as you continuously move forward through the events of the story that take place. But even though the story is constantly moving you forwards, you still have the option to take your ship back to town to use its various facilities. In order to enjoy Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, you don't need any prior knowledge of the series, and you can play it as a standalone game. But there are a few systems in place for anyone that wants to learn more about the world and its characters. One of these systems is the glossary that can be accessed during cutscenes. This can be used to view explanations of specific terms so you can gain a better understanding of the world and its lore. You can also learn more about the history of each playable character through Fate episodes. These episodes give some backstory to the characters so that people can learn a bit more about how the crew came to encounter these characters in the original game. Completing these episodes will also give your characters stat boosts so everyone can benefit from playing through these episodes. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink has a huge cast of playable characters that each have their own unique playstyle and abilities to master. To start off with, you'll have access to six characters that can be freely swapped in and out of the party while not in combat. You can play as any of these characters, but during the main story, the captain will need to be one of the members in your party. In addition to these characters, there are many other playable characters that can be unlocked throughout the game. In order to unlock these characters, you'll need to use an item called the Crewmate card, which is given to you as a reward for reaching certain milestones in the story or as first-time completion rewards in specific quests. After receiving these cards, you can take them to Sierra's Knickknack Shack in town, which will allow you to unlock these additional characters in any order that you wish. Each of the playable characters has their own playstyle that truly feels unique, so out of all of the characters, you're sure to find one that you enjoy playing. You can focus on playing a jack-of-all-trades character like the Captain that can heal allies, debuff enemies, or use powerful offensive skills after increasing their arts level by performing combos. Or maybe you'd want to play as a character that has more of a timing and combo-heavy playstyle, like Narmaya, who can switch between stances that focus on rapid attacks or large sweeping attacks that can hit multiple enemies. Or maybe you want to play as a ranged character like Rackham, who can continuously hit enemies with a barrage of well-timed shots to build up explosive finishes from a safe distance. 
Each character can use a combination of normal attacks, unique attacks, and link attacks to perform basic combos, which have a variety of effects depending on the character being used. These combos can also be combined with a character's skills to create a devastating chain of attacks. You can set up to four active skills per character, but characters can also have up to two passive skills known as support skills, which form the foundation of their playstyle. Every character can perform well on their own, but there are a variety of party-based mechanics that encourage teamwork and a sense of unity between party members or players. The first of those are link attacks. As the party continues to deal damage to an enemy, a blue bar known as the stun gauge will begin to fill. Once the gauge is full, all party members will be prompted to perform a simultaneous link attack. As you continue to perform link attacks and other party-based actions, the party's link level will begin to rise. Once the link level reaches 100%, if all party members successfully use a link attack within a specific time frame, they will activate link time. While link time is active, time will slow down for enemies and your party will receive additional buffs for the duration, like increased attack and critical hit rate, a skill cooldown reduction and health regen. Skybound Art Chains are another party focus action that can be used during battle. Skybound Arts are a character's ultimate ability and to activate them, you'll need to fill the Skybound Art gauge displayed under a character's health bar. This bar will gradually increase as you deal damage to enemies during combat. And once it's full, each party member can use their Skybound art in succession to create a chain of powerful attacks. If the chain is successful, a supplementary elemental attack known as a chain burst will be activated based on the amount of Skybound arts that were used in the chain. You'll face a variety of enemies in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Some may be smaller creatures that hunt in larger groups, but you'll also challenge bosses that will put your understanding of the previously mentioned gameplay systems to the test. As bosses continuously take damage, their mode bar, which is displayed under their health bar, will begin to charge. Once the bar is fully charged, they'll become enraged and enter the overdrive state. While in overdrive, bosses are more of a threat and will use additional special attacks and mechanics that will require your focus and attention. Certain bosses can also enter the bloodthirst state, which is indicated by the yellow lightning effect and the bloodthirst icon under their health bar. While the boss is in this state, it will make your skybound arts ineffective and it also reduces the amount of damage the boss takes from attacks. During these situations, the boss will usually use a series of attacks that will put you on the defensive, so you'll need to avoid the barrage of attacks that they'll send your way. But once the bloodthirst icon vanishes, this will be your signal to counterattack. As you continue to attack a boss that's entered overdrive, you'll gradually reduce their mode bar, and once the bar is empty, the boss will become broken. This will usually make the boss fall to the ground, giving allies the opportunity to deal some additional damage while the boss is vulnerable. If you think things may be a bit too challenging while playing Relink, there are assist modes that will make the characters more manageable to control. Depending on the type of assistance you require, you can simplify the controls, which will allow you to perform combos, skills, and evasive actions while tapping a single button or by moving towards nearby enemies. These assist modes can be used in the story and in quest mode, but you won't be able to use them in high difficulty quest mode content. Quests are one of the other main forms of content that you can take part in while playing through Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. These aren't like these side quests that you can accept from citizens in the town during the story. Instead, these quests are highly repeatable challenges that can be done offline with your own characters, or you can go online and take on the challenges with other players worldwide. To start a quest, you'll need to visit the quest counter while in town. There are over 100 specially made quests with a wide range of difficulties and objectives. These quests can also have optional side goals that provide additional challenges. If you manage to complete these challenges, they may extend the quest and reveal additional secret objectives like hidden boss battles. Completing quests are worthwhile since the rewards you can earn are essential to the long-term growth of your characters. By completing quests, you can earn new weapons, new sigils, crafting and upgrading materials, experience points, and other resources that are required for upgrading your characters. 
Even after you're done with the main story content, the quest content in the game will continue to expand, leading into what is considered end game content, which are high difficulty challenges that can result in the game having over 100 hours of playtime, or even more depending on how far you want to take things. Even though Granblue Fantasy Relink will be a complete package at release, it's been announced that we'll have even more to look forward to. In the months following Relink's launch, new playable characters and even more endgame quest content will be added to the game, which means we'll have to start preparing for the upcoming challenges. But you won't find yourself being thrown into a difficult quest that you're not ready to handle. All quests have difficulty levels that are clearly marked, as well as an advisory power level that lets you know how strong you should be before attempting the quest. A character's power level is a number that indicates how strong a specific character is based on their current build. And this number is displayed for each character in your party while in the main menu, and it's also displayed for your currently selected character in the quest selection screen. In order to improve a character's power, you can equip them with various weapons and accessories known as sigils. Weapons and sigils have additional passive bonuses called traits, which can provide characters with various enhancements that can increase their power and customize their playstyle. To start off with, each character will have access to one sigil slot, but as you continue to play through the game, more slots will become available, further expanding your customization options. Weapons and sigils can also be upgraded at the blacksmith to improve their effectiveness, using the materials gathered while exploring in the story or while doing quests. New weapons can also be forged in the same way at the blacksmith, if you have the required materials, which can give your characters an additional power boost. Characters can also be enhanced through masteries. Each character has a mastery tree that has various unlockable nodes that will provide a character with stat enhancements, new combat abilities, and skills. To unlock the nodes on a character's mastery tree, you'll need to spend mastery points that can be obtained when a character levels up or from other sources like quest rewards, treasure chests, or from certain enemies when they're defeated. Each weapon you obtain will also unlock its own set of mastery nodes in the collection tab of a character's mastery tree. These nodes can provide your characters with additional bonuses based on the speciality of a weapon. So if a weapon increases stun power, there will be a node that unlocks a similar bonus for your characters. In order to further customize your characters, it's also possible to change their visual appearance with various color packs or by changing the outfits of specific characters after unlocking them while playing through the story. Now that I've gone over what you should expect from Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, let me tell you about how you can try it for yourselves. There is a free demo that is currently available on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5, and you can download it right now. You can find the link to the relevant information in the description and pinned comment. But for now, I'll go over what you should expect to see while playing the demo. This demo has three modes to choose from. A tutorial mode, a story mode and a quest mode. The tutorial mode will give you a basic rundown of the controls and systems in the game to help you get a better understanding of what you can do before you jump into the other game modes. In the story mode, you can experience a portion of Relink's second chapter while taking control of Gran, the main character and captain of the crew. The story revolves around saving the citizens of an island while they're under attack from goblins, but you'll also be able to explore the area to find treasure or to take part in various side activities. In the quest mode, you can customize and play as 11 different characters. When you head to the quest counter, you can select from three quests. One is a horde mode quest where you need to defeat waves of enemies, and the others are two boss quests. These quests can be done offline using the available characters, or you can select one of those characters and go online to take part in the quest with other players. Completing the various objectives in both the story mode and quest mode will unlock rewards for the full game. So it's worth going through both modes so you can collect a few items to give yourself a head start. Now I'll show you some gameplay of what it's like to play through one of these boss quests in the demo. For this run, I'll be playing offline as Yodara, and in my party I'll be using Narmaya, Zeta and Charlotta. It may not seem obvious at first, but this team has a nice selection of debuffs, buffs and mitigation skills that can keep the team alive, while still being able to deal a lot of damage. Equipment wise, I went for full damage since I'll be using the mitigation skills to offset the risk that comes with having lower health. 
Just like in the original game, buffs and debuffs will be useful to have. Charlotta is our current debuffer, who focuses on inflicting defense down on the boss. Zeta is currently buffing the team with attack boosts, and Narmaya is here to help increase the speed that the boss's stun gauge fills due to her rapid attacks. So even though you can't directly command your party members or control their AI, you can set them up to perform in a specific way through their skills and equipment. <laughs> Zeta's other purpose in this team is to inflict paralysis on the boss. If paralysis lands on the boss, it creates huge opportunities for the party to attack uninterrupted. In general, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on your party's buffs, enemy debuffs and skill cooldowns so you can take advantage of every opportunity. Don't be afraid to reduce your health in favor of attack focus sigils if you use mitigation and supportive skills for the party. In this case, I'm generating three triple shroud marks with Yodara so that I can put mirror images on my party. This lets them avoid damage a certain number of times, which gives Yodara surprisingly strong evasive support options for the team. Your skills are just as important as your normal attack combos, so it's always a good idea to pay attention to your cooldowns and use them when the time is right. Some skills you may want to save until you generate enough resources to benefit from their additional effects when available. But depending on the situation, you may end up using them without any enhancements, like if a skill can be used as a movement ability. It totally depends on the character and your playstyle. And that's the end of the quest. We managed to get the S++ rank, but I'm sure you can all beat my time in single player, so go ahead and download the demo for yourselves and give it a try. If you have any fun screenshots or videos of your time in a demo, then send them over to me on Twitter or in Discord. I'm looking forward to seeing the things that you've managed to discover. Hopefully this video helped you decide if Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is a game that you should play. I'll be making many more videos about the game, so remember to subscribe if you want to be the first to know when they're available. And if you want any additional info about the game, the link in the description and pinned comment will point you in the right direction. I'll be making some new videos very soon, but until I make those videos, here's another that you might find interesting.